Hey, what's up YouTube? This is the We All Juggle Knives channel and you are at Multi-Tool Monday. Today I have this multi-tool. It is the Henstrong Multi-Tool. I believe they're calling it the 9-in-1 Multiplier. So the multi-tool arrived in this pouch. It's a fairly a fairly sturdy pouch as multi-tool pouches go. It's got a belt loop there and it's got a snap closure. Now when I bought this, which was a few months ago, it was going for $20 on Amazon and I thought, you know, I'll try it out for 20 Since then it has gone up to like 24 but don't let that deter you. Amazon prices definitely fluctuate, so it'll go back down in time. Now if that ever happens where I show a multi-tool or a knife and the price is different than in the video, don't panic, dude. Amazon prices fluctuate wildly, so just wait until it gets to your comfort zone and then pull the trigger. Now this company, Henstrong, I actually looked them up on the internet. Apparently they've been around since 1985 and they're basically a very large industrial metal stamping uh, company. From their website, it looks like they actually do manufacturing for a lot of other brands. I definitely saw some multi-tools on their website that it looks like they're making for Coast and other more well-known brands that we, uh, we know about. All right, let's get into the tool set first. It has slide out pliers. To slide them out, you press on this and they just slide out like so. And they are spring loaded pliers as well. Okay, cutting some wire with the wire cutter. Seems to work pretty well. Hold on, doing this through the viewfinder. All right, let's use the pliers for something that I normally use little pliers for, snapping off these uh, snap-off blades. There you go. Now, speaking of slide-out pliers, I think this uh, multi-tool is actually very loosely based on a discontinued multi-tool. That is the Gerber Balance that I have previously reviewed. I don't think they make it anymore, but it is still sold. Because if you look at the aluminum scales on this, kind of resembles the aluminum scales on this and also the sliding mechanism for the pliers. You know, it looks loosely based on it, but they've changed a lot on it too. Now the other tools on this are a plain edge knife, a combo tool that has a screwdriver, a can opener, and a bottle opener. And then you've got a bit driver there, and then you have a wood saw. And that's all. It just has the pliers and four longer tools. It has no shorter tools on it. That is an interesting choice of tools. It would definitely qualify as a minimalist tool set. It's definitely not the toolbox approach, which as we've covered before would be if they tried to fit every possible tool. So they've picked and chosen. Now all those tools are actually non-locking tools. There's no locking mechanism and the opening is just nail nicks like so. Right, so if you're looking for a cheap multi-tool that has a lock, check out the Gerber suspension or one of the Ganzo multi-tools. Alright, let's get into the blade. Is it sharp? It is actually quite sharp, but I do have some bad news about this blade. The reason that that blade is sharp is that I did sharpen it. Alright, when this arrived, it did not really have an edge. I mean, not just dull, it really did not have an edge when it arrived. Like when this thing arrived, the edge, it was basically, it was like this. It wouldn't even rip the paper, it would just bend it. Okay, so I did sharpen it. One of the reasons why I was actually willing to put in the time to sharpen that blade is because you know, the blade shape is pretty nice. It's definitely a big improvement in blade shape from that uh, Gerber that this seems to be loosely based on. So I like the multi-tool. At least enough to actually put in a little bit of work in sharpening it. So the bad news is that it doesn't come sharp, but the good news is that it can take a very sharp edge. It's very easy to sharpen. Now, how long will it retain that edge? Well, According to the Amazon listing, that steel is 5CR15MOV. So I would imagine that you'll probably have to resharpen it pretty often if you use it a lot because it's just a fairly cheap stainless steel. But, you know, them's the brakes. And if you're wondering how I did sharpen this, I used a work sharp because, you know, I'm not going to spend all day like it's a freaking katana or something. I mean, I'm going to... You know, I just needed a quick and dirty way to sharpen it, so I used a work sharp, and as you saw with the paper, it worked fine. 
and the other tools. It's got this bit driver which gives you good reach. It's got one double-ended bit with a flathead and a Phillips or cross. And then it has another screwdriver right there, so three screwdrivers in total. Alright, the best part of any video, the alcohol. As you can tell, I have my uh, bar rag. Now, actually, it's a polishing cloth. It's not a bar rag, but let's try this out. Alright. There you go. Wow, it can open a bottle. You know, one of my viewers said that if you have pliers, you can open, you know, you can decap a bottle. You don't need a bottle opener. Well, I suppose that's true, you know, but what else are they going to put in this section of the tool? So whatever, it's convenient. And this brings us to the wood saw. The wood saw actually works well. I tested it out the other day. Okay, YouTube, we're going to try out the saw on this multi-tool. I have prepared this piece of wood. We're going to make some notches and then we're going to uh, basically make a paracord wrap but first we need some notches and to cut this part out so we're going to use this saw sorry for the background noise out here Okay, this is what we have so far. This took like 20 or 30 seconds. I'm going to continue to work on that and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so here we go. I removed the material in between there and I basically use this saw to create a right angle and a stop cut. All right, so the little saw can be useful and this is going to look a lot better when I'm done with it. I'll show you what it becomes. All right, we are back through the magic of editing, and you want to see how that little project turned out. This is what I made. It's a little wooden, you know, it's a wooden knife. It's a artistic piece, but it's also, it's also a little shank. But I did the paracord wrap, and uh, that's the part that I used the saw for. You know, the saw was useful. You know, it cut all the way to there, and it cut there, and now the paracord can't slip out. Yeah, you know, back in the day, I used to not like little saws like that because I was like, what, you know, what's the point of it? But actually, I found out the point is just to make little notches and grooves like that. It's not to cut down a big tree or anything, but it, it can be useful for certain tasks. Final conclusions about this Henstrong multi-tool. All right, let's divide this into the good points and the bad points. Uh, let's do the good points first. The pliers can be deployed with one hand, that's good. All the fold-out tools fold from the uh, outside, meaning you don't have to open the multi-tool to deploy them, so that's good as well. The wood saw works well, the two openers and the three screwdrivers, those are all fine. They give you a large blade with a good blade shape and none of that BS with a combo edge, So, and the blade shape has a good slicing and piercing profile, so the blade shape was good. The pouch was actually very sturdy and a lot better than most cheap pouches that'll come with a cheap multi-tool. As for the drawbacks to the tool, well, the blade shape, as cool as it is, it did not come sharp, so you're going to have to put in some sharpening time for that blade, and just the lack of certain tools. It has no scissors, it has no metal file, it only has three screwdrivers. And the uh, bit exchanger is of limited use if it doesn't come with a bit kit for it. You know, it's really, it's a bit exchanger, but it only has two screwdrivers for it. So, yeah, those would be the main drawbacks in my mind. Yeah, they really should give you a better edge on this, or any edge, because a lot of people who buy a cheap multi-tool are not necessarily knife people, so they're not going to know how to sharpen it. So they're kind of like screwing over that huge segment of the population. So factoring in all the good points and all the bad points and then comparing this to other stuff of the same price range, what do I think? Well, as I said, I bought this for $20. I feel it was worth that, but I don't feel it's worth much more than that. Now, if this were, let's say, $14 or $15, I would actually say that would be a great deal. You know, so in the future, if this goes down to like $15, I would say great deal. At $20, it's alright, and it seems to have gone up to around $25, at least currently. That's very marginal, like $25, eh, that, that's really pushing it a little bit. So, yeah, that's my honest opinion. 
I would give this multi-tool for its price range a solid B. Right? But, you know, you, I mean, there's so many multi-tools in this price range that would just get a complete fail that a, a B is actually not, not a bad rating for like a $20 some multi-tool. All right, YouTube. Well, I will include a link, not just to this multi-tool, but to a whole bunch of other multi-tools as well. Please try to use those links. They do help support the channel and they keep Multi-Tool Monday rolling. I hope you enjoyed this episode. This has been We All Juggle Knives. I'm out.